Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be revisiting an epoxy resin, a new design I did a couple of videos back, with a bit of a different approach. So without further ado, let's get into it. The U-blank was covered in a wax which needed to be removed so the resin would stick to it. I could have turned it off on the lathe, but I decided to use the disc sander. The wax melted into the sanding disc, reducing its effectiveness. I used a block of natural rubber to clean the sanding disc, which helped a lot. Moving on, it's time for a new tool introduction, the Laguna 1412 bandsaw, which I used to trim the smaller U logs ready for casting. I will be using this new bandsaw in upcoming projects when I'll go into more depth about it. But for now, all I will say is, it's awesome. This is where I changed my approach. This time I used a U-blank that filled the bottom of the casting bucket with no need to fill the space with bits of offcuts. I arranged the smaller U-logs on top with just one piece of scrap timber in the middle to save resin. And with that done, I moved on to mixing the epoxy resin. I figured I would need three 450ml batches mixing for the first pour. My usual resin pusher cannot ship to the UK anymore because of Brexit, so this is a new manufacturer. They got good reviews, so I figured I would give them a try. The resin is supplied in two parts, mixed at a 2 to 1 ratio. Once added to the mixing cup, I stirred it for around two minutes. I decided to go for a two-tone colour design this time. The chosen colours were just a red and anti-gold. I mixed two batches of red and one of the gold colour. After adding the mica colouring powder, I mixed it all up for a further two minutes, for a total of four minutes mixing time as recommended by the manufacturer. The first lot mixed, there was nothing left to do except pour it into the casting bucket. This was quickly followed by the next two batches, both mixed in the same way. To help pick out the gold, I added a few drops of yellow alcohol dye. With all three batches added, I placed some weight on top to stop the timber floating in the resin and I placed the whole thing in the pressure pot. I added around 50 to 55 psi to the pot and left it overnight. The next day, off camera, I added two more batches of resin, one just a red and one anti-gold, and put it back in the pressure pot for another 24 hours. I'm not sure if it's the new manufacturer or the warm weather, but the resin cured very quickly, so I was able to get it on the lathe and start turning only one day after adding the last pour. Up to now, and for most of the rest of the video, I have speeded the clips up. As indicated, this clip is at normal speed, and the rest are speeded up by three and a half times, and in some clips by five times. This is so I can show more of the turning. I'm interested to know how you, the viewers, feel about this, so uh, drop a comment below. As with my previous resin projects, I used the Easywood Tools mid-size carbide finisher. 
The resin in this casting turned like a dream. The cutter was able to peel away streams of resin with very little shattering or chipping. I had said in a previous video that I needed to use a glove to protect my left hand from flying shards of resin, but not this time. I slowly nibbled away at the resin, exposing the U blank in the base. As before, this will have a pedestal, but with a much wider base. I wanted to show off as much of the timber grain as possible, and this particular piece of U has some really nice figuring. If you're enjoying this video i really enjoy making them and receiving the feedback through the comments section and watching the subscription count go up it's all very satisfying so could i ask you if you haven't already please subscribe it will only take a moment comments are always welcome and a thumbs up will be much appreciated and please feel free to share any of these videos it will all help to grow the channel so uh, thank you very much and uh, back to the video With the base roughly to shape, I concentrated on exposing the U in the upper section, gently removing material to create the overhanging rim and the pinched waist. In this clip you can see some chipping just above the base, which meant I had to take a bit more off than I would have liked, but overall I got it down to the shape I was looking for. suffered a bit of tear out on the end grain, so I gave it some sanding with 80 grit to see if I could get rid of it, which worked to some degree, but then I remembered I had purchased a negative rate cutter, so I installed it in the Easywood Tools mid-size finisher, and after a bit of hole filling with super glue, I gave it a go. And what a difference that made, the cutter was able to remove fine whispers of resin and you, and totally cleaned up all of the tear out. The finish it left was very impressive. A final bit of fine tuning with the large negative rate scraper and it was time to cut the mortise in the base. For this I first matched it out with a utility knife and cut down with a quarter inch parting tool. I couldn't quite get the correct angle so I had to remove the tailstock support which made everything a lot easier. tidy up with a skew chisel and after sanding from 80 to 3000 grit it was time to add the finish. I cleaned down with denatured alcohol, applied two coats of sanding sealer then denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Yorkshire grit, fine abrasive paste was up next, two coats, polished off with paper towel. This was followed up with Novus acrylic fine scratch remover and plastic clean and shine.
and with the outside finished, I turned the bowl round and began hollowing out the inside. A bit time consuming, but I've condensed it down, so in the next couple of minutes, I thought we could just watch and listen to a nice song. Enjoy. I wish you could see yourself Just sitting there on my chair I'm staring at you You don't even notice Should have told you straight away You don't have to be afraid great song i hope you liked it it seemed a shame to talk all over it a little bit of fine tuning with a negative rate scraper on the inside and it was ready for sanding from 80 to 3000 grit Sanding finished, I cleaned down with denatured alcohol and applied two coats of sanding sealer, which was denibbed with the usual non-abrasive scotch pad. This was quickly followed up with two coats of Yorkshire Grit fine abrasive paste. Then the Novus fine scratch remover polished off to a deep shine. And finally, Novus plastic polish and cleaner. that's the end of another project i hope you enjoyed this one as i said at the beginning this was a slightly different approach to the last resin project without any tiny off cuts to float around in the resin i achieved a much less cluttered finish and i think the colors worked out as well
And with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Comments are always welcome and a thumbs up will be great. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.